Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. How are you? Good. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> okay. So for our audience, hello everyone, I am Parvi from Strong and Healthy Minds and today we are completing the 12th episode of our series Mind Talkie. Today we have Monique Bates on board with us. She has over 10 years of experience with uh, working with uh, Australia's leading children's hospital and uh, I welcome you Monique. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so as you said, my name's Monique Bathis. I'm a registered music therapist here in Australia. I live in a small little uh, beachside town just north of Brisbane. And as you said, I've been working for almost 12 years as a music therapist across mainly in paediatrics, working in a children's hospital as well as in private practice as well. And that's been primarily with uh, younger kids or school-aged kids with various disabilities, in particular um, autism. And I'm also a mum, so I have uh, a six-year-old and a two-month-old. So I'm newly <laughs> um, had my second child, so still in that newborn phase, a bit sleep-deprived. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much me. And I also um, really am passionate about how music can support emotional regulation, particularly with, with young children, uh, but just how music can be really supportive for everyone's emotional well-being, which I guess is why we're here today talking about um, music and emotional well-being as well. Okay, so uh, that's wonderful to know. So our topic for today is music and emotional well-being itself. So I've prepared a couple of questions. I'll run you through them one by one. That's all right? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so uh, first and foremost, uh, I would like to ask you what really music therapy is. So, <laughs> it's, um, I guess, just to differentiate it from things like music education and um, music entertainment. So, music therapy, I guess, by definition, is a um, allied health profession. So it falls in the same category as speech therapy, physiotherapy, um, occupational therapy, and social work. So in that allied health profession, and it's a research-based practice. And as a music therapist, I am registered with the Australian Music Therapy Association. And it's really the intentional use of music that is going to help support people of all ages and abilities to improve their health functioning and well-being. And as music therapists, we use a range of music making methods. So things such as songwriting, um, therapeutic song singing, instrumental play, movement to music and impro improvisation, just to name a few. And we use these uh, music making methods or interventions to support the clients that we work with to reach their goals. So this can be across a various different domains, such as communication goals or social skills, physical goals or emotional and, and mental health support. So I guess we're looking at um, using music to um, obtain non-music related goals, whereas I guess things like music education or helping someone build their musical skills and music entertainment is obviously entertaining someone through music. So that's where it is a little bit different. Uh, so for an example, we might use songwriting to support uh, someone to express themselves in a creative way that's going to help them from an emotional point of view and sometimes using music in that creative way can be really beneficial for people who might find it difficult to talk about their feelings so they're able to express themselves in that creative way through music where they might write lyrics to a song they might put music to it um, and all those sorts of things so that's just one particular example and as music therapists we can work um, in a variety of different sectors um, including health community aged care um, disability, early childhood, and as I mentioned, I, I have private practice as well. So hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> yes. So you've been working for so long. How has your experience been uh, working as a music therapist? Um, yeah, it's quite interesting, I guess, reflecting. I was actually reflecting the other day just how my practice has changed over the years, and this is for various reasons because I've worked in um, in different environments, but... I think also just becoming a mother myself has really shifted how I practice and, and um, I guess 
the area that I um, am really passionate about now. So um, I guess my experience has been varied. Um, I've worked in a lot of different areas, particularly working at the children's hospital that I work in. I've worked with really young babies in complex infant care, so bubs with lots of different complex medical needs. I've worked in oncology, so working with ch young children with, with cancer. I've worked in palliative care, um, in rehabilitation, so working with people who um, have acquired brain injuries or spinal cord injuries. Um, pretty much any area in the hospital I've worked in. I've worked in intensive care, so using music to um, support people even when they're in um, drug-induced comas, so using music as a really gentle form of stimulation to support them in an environment that can be really unpredictable, particularly with lots of different beeping sounds from different medical equipment and really helping families and particularly parents um, be able to interact with with their child who is in a coma so giving them really gentle strategies that they can use to still feel connected with their children when they're in intensive care so yeah i have worked on a lot of different areas and uh, my experience and and has been very broad in that sense but um but yeah it's definitely as i said over the last probably two or three years i've really changed my focus particularly working in private practice to focusing on um, supporting parents in particular, how they can uh, support their children and support themselves in their own uh, emotional well-being and self-care and using music to, to do that. Okay. So as you also said, I'm aware that you are currently working with children, right? Yes. So uh, holistically speaking, uh, can you tell that what kinds of people or specifically who all can actually benefit from music therapy? Uh, really, anyone can benefit from, I suppose, music in general. Um, with regard to music therapy, it's more working with people that have particular needs um, and goals that um, we're working on to, to meet those needs. So people will come to me as a music therapist, as I said, working with um, children, and it doesn't have to be children. It can be adults with disabilities. I have worked with some older um early adult uh sorry young adults so um you know late teens early 20s and i have worked with adults as well with brain injuries so really anyone that might have a need um and a goal that they're trying to work on and as i said working with people in whatever their goal is whether that be from a communication and or physical um, but in terms of music everyone can really benefit from the power of music because music has such a significant impact on our brains and it does such wonderful things to our brains so anyone can benefit from music music therapy i guess it's more specific to people that um require um, additional support in reaching various goals um but infants uh, young young children um adolescents adults and um elderly can all benefit from from music in some way shape or form okay so uh, since you mentioned that how significant music is, that uh, I know that music, uh, how powerful music can be, right? It can evoke different emotions. But uh, something that I would like to ask you is that why, why does uh, music actually have such a significant impact on us? And why does it, and what role do emotions actually play in our experience of music? So... I guess I'll just start at how music can impact the brain because it sort of all flows from that. So as we know, our brain's made up of two hemispheres. We've got the left and the right hemisphere. And I guess historically speaking, music was always seen as a right brain um, activity and our right brain can often be referred to as our creative brain. So all the arts, music, all of, all of that type of thing. But we're so fortunate in, in recent times, probably the last couple of decades, where we have such fantastic things like medical imaging now where we can see the activity of the brain. And it's now been shown that music um, can activate all areas of the brain simultaneously. So it's both sides of the brain are being stimulated when we engage in music. And it's really like the, um, the brain's lighting up like a Christmas tree almost. So when you see these images, it's, it's really, really interesting to see um, how music is um, impacting our brain. So when we, some ways that this can happen are when we listen to music, this 
not only activates our auditory cortex, obviously when we're listening to it, um, in both hemispheres, but also um, it's stimulating areas of the brain that are involved in movement and other basic body functions such as our breathing rate, our heart rate and that type of thing as well. When we hear music uh, and listening, this also involves our emotion and memory centres of the brain. And this, things such as the hippocampus, which is part of our limbic system, and this is um, our emotion centre of the brain. And this is why we often have um, emotional responses to certain songs and to particular types of music. We, I know for me, I, when you think back on songs from my childhood or even from when I was a teenager, um, I remember the first concert I went to, for example, and that brings me joy remembering that. So we are able to retain this information through our memories, but we also hold on to that emotion as well. Um, you know, things like if, you got, if you're married, you might have had a particular song at your wedding that from your first dance. So when we associate that song with that particular event, it brings us back to that moment. So there's a lot of emotion that is evoked through music um, when we associate it with different memories. Um, when we tap or move along to music, this gets our cerebellum involved, which is responsible for regulating our motor movements. And if we're reading music or watching a band play or watching music on TV, our visual centres are going to be stimulated. And also when we listen or recall lyrics, this is also going to involve different language centres of our brains. And lots of things are getting stimulated in our brain when we engage in music. Um, and I think, is that all? <laughs> I can't remember if that's all you asked me, but... Um, yeah. So uh, can we say that different kinds of music would actually evoke different kinds of responses? Yeah, certainly different songs can. And I mean, as I mentioned, if we have a, a song that is, we're associated with something, that's going to evoke a particular um, emotion within us. But there, generally speaking, are certain qualities of music that can evoke different responses in us. So for example, music that has a slower tempo, few or no words or lyrics, or when the lyrics and the words are really quite drawn out um, within, the, within the music, this can really help to calm our nervous system, it can slow our heart rate down, we'll start to breathe slower in time to the music. Um, so this is, I guess, why generally speaking, we listen to slower music when we're wanting to relax, um, if we're wanting to get ourselves a bit more energized, increase our arousal levels. We might listen to music that's more upbeat and that's going to get us in a more bright, positive, energized mood. Um, so music that uh, might have lots of different percussion, a really strong beat, um, that's going to increase our heart rate and get, our, um, get us really energized. And, you know, that's why, for example, when we exercise, we often have music that helps us get into that mood and motivate us as well. Mm -hmm. Um, from, a, I guess, a more musicality point of view, um, it's said that music that's in a major key, so this has more of a brighter sound, can help us feel happier, and that music that's in a minor key may bring um, about more feelings of melancholy and, and sadness. Um, but it can be dependent on what your musical preference is as well. So what someone might find relaxing, someone else may not. Um, so there is that element in it as well with what your musical preference is too. Okay. So... Uh... Can, is there, uh, can we say that music can also have a negative impact on us? Because uh, if certain kinds of music are evoking a happy response or making you feel cheerful or energetic, uh, can we say that music can also have a negative impact? Yeah, look, it can. Um, if you're using music in an unhealthy way, so for example, if you're if someone's um, listening to a piece of music or a certain song and they're really getting stuck in bad memories that they associate to that song or that's starting to make them feel more depressed, um, it can certainly have a negative impact on them if it's being used long term and someone's ruminating over that sort of thing. Or um, if they're using music as a way to escape from the real world, it can become problematic um, from a mental health perspective. Um, so from that point of view, it, it can have a negative um, impact. And I guess also just being aware of things such as overstimulations can be particularly um, for young children and, and babies. So really looking, but also for, uh, for, um, for older people as well. So 
our sensory systems can become overloaded if if for example there's lots of uh, there's lots of lights on in your house there's music you've got children screaming <laughs> um, you know it can add that other extra layer of um, sensory stimulation and then when we become sensory overloaded we can start to feel really overwhelmed it can it's really stressed so i guess it's just really um being mindful and aware that when our sensory systems are overloaded um, adding music to that can potentially um overwhelm us um, but if we're using as i said before if if you do find that using music that helps you to calm in that sort of um, scenario does work then obviously use that but it's just about being aware of overstimulation and how music can can add to that as well okay so in that way can we say that um, the kind of environment we are in and the kind of emotional state we are in really determines our experience of music yeah absolutely yeah and it can also be dependent on day to day i know for some for me in particular when i think of um for days that I might be already really tired, um, my eldest son's been challenging, um, and I'm in a moment where there's lots of things going on. If Sometimes I just need quiet. So I think it's also being aware of when you do need to, to switch off that, that stimulation and just um, give yourself a moment to, to calm down with, with no stimulation um, and just stepping away from that. Um, but for me also, if I step away, take a few deep breaths, center myself again, and then I might go out and put some, some calming music on and go about my day. Um, but yeah, definitely it can really have a, um, can really be dependent on, yeah, what your emotional state is already, you know, all those different things, whether you're tired um, and what's going on in your environment too. Okay. So uh, considering all of this, uh, how can we say that, uh, can you tell us how music and music therapy actually have an effect or let's say impact on our brain psychology? Uh, so in terms of, I guess, looking at when we're looking at coping, for example, um, when we are faced, I suppose, with a... Uh, a situation where um, we become quite stressed. Um, we then have our amygdala, which is part of our limbic system, gets um, stimulated and our brain is basically telling us that um, there's, a, there's a danger, we're in danger. So when this happens and we can maybe become quite panicked, quite overwhelmed, overstimulated, our brain goes into survival mode and it's basically telling us that we're not safe. Um, and we go into that sort of fight, flight, freeze response. Um, and this can, although having emotional release is a good thing, but this can then cause things like meltdowns, overstimulation. We might become really upset and just overwhelmed and really stressed out. So when we then add music into our, our day to day, and the best thing to do is to weave it in throughout your day. So music can really help our brains to cope better by keeping it in a more regulated and calm state. And, um, and as I said, the best way to support our brains to function at their best and to calm the nervous system is to weave music-based strategies and activities into our day. So this can look like things like listening to music. So we might start the day listening to music um, and various times throughout the day we might um, listen to music. But there are many other things we can do as well. Singing is a really um, impactful way that we can support our nervous system and support our brains to function at their best. Um, and, and when I say singing, this can be anything from singing in the shower to singing along to a song when you're in the car driving somewhere. You could just be humming because you're still going to get that um, same effect when you're humming. Um, when we do sing, we're naturally extending our out breath. So we're naturally exhaling at a more prolonged rate. And that's going to naturally help us to slow our breathing down as well, which helps to calm our nervous systems. So singing is a really impactful way to support our brains and nervous systems to function at their best as well. Moving to music, we automatically want to move to music when we, when we hear it. So whether that's... Um, you know, if you've got children throwing a dance party, 
Um, it could just be in your living room, put on a song and just dance to it. It could just be swaying, tapping along. All those things are going to help to uh, calm our um, brains and our nervous system as well. So there's lots of ways that we can actively use music throughout our day. And as I said, when we do weave it throughout our day and just do five minutes or so at a time every couple hours or so, um, that's when we're going to find the most benefit um, because it's just going to continue to maintain that regulation and to help our um, nervous system to remain calm so that we're not getting to the end of the day, everything seems too much, too over, uh, overwhelming, and then we just get totally stressed out and, and shut down, basically. That's when our brain will shut down, when we leave it to the last minute and things just boil over. Right. So it is actually more about the associations we uh, form with music, right? Like, uh, let's say that uh, there is a uh, certain kind of music that evokes a certain kind of response. So can we say that it was the association that was formed with that music that is actually evoking that response? Uh, yeah, I mean, I always say to use music that is your preference, um, that you know, because um, our brains love predictability and music in its own right is predictable and it's familiar and it has that consistent beat. So rhythm is really important, having that consistent um, rhythm and beat. And that can be using any song that you um, that you prefer because when it's something that's familiar, our brain is going to feel safer because it, it is familiar and um, we're able to predict what's coming next. So uh, using music... Yeah, but that is your preference, um, is always going to, to help us because we already have that association with it and it's already something that we know. Um, but it, yeah, as I said, it can be music that is has words. It could just be some really gentle music that has just instruments. It doesn't have to have words. Um, but anything that you um, enjoy and find either calming or energises you, depending on what um, what your goal is, whether you're wanting to calm yourself down or whether you're wanting to um, boost your boost your mood and energy as well. So definitely associations with the music and a positive association with that music is really important as well. All right. So um, the next I would really like to ask that, so how can we actually correlate music with growth and development of an individual? So I guess from birth, um, we're intrinsically musical and music for most does have such a huge part in our lives from early on. So we use music for learning, um, particularly with young children. They're exposed to so much uh, music, whether that be at school or, or daycare and even in the home. Um, the songs like the ABC song or the alphabet song, um, there's songs for basically anything that you want to teach children. So it is such a huge part in development in those early years. Um, and it also provides so many opportunities for social connection. It's such a um, way of socialising with people, particularly in those teenage years. Um, music's such a big part of the teenage culture. <laughs> um, yeah. It's a way to connect with um, peers and, you know, go to, watch bands together, talk about your favourite music. So it has such a social aspect to it as well. Um, and it plays such a huge role in various cultures as well and even within your own family unit. Um, you know, you have specific songs or different traditions that include music in it, um, whether that be different traditional dances within your culture or within your family you might have a you know a particular song that's your family song and um whenever you hear it you all sort of bust out bust out the singing together so it has such a cultural um relevance as well um uh, music also releases so many amazing chemicals in our brain so some things like oxytocin which is the love hormone so again that's um supporting our connection with each other and singing in particular in a group of people has been shown to release oxytocin and build that bonding and connectedness, which is important for all ages, not just um, in the younger years. So often it's spoken about with mothers and babies, but also within um, choirs and group singing and that, but anyone can benefit from that. 
Um, it releases endorphins, so that feel-good hormone's being re released when we use music. So it's really supporting growth in that way. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So uh, how... Uh... So on this note, how does it really, you know, help us in create a positive overall well-being? Um, I think really just because of how music impacts our, our brains, I would say. Um, and when we um, engage in music, like I said, there's lots of different ways we can. But the three ways that I always just say to people, if nothing else, listen to music it's such a simple thing you can do within within your household for yourself um you know as as a mum, i often am hearing my my son's music so really just taking the time to to listen to music for yourself um can have such a positive effect on your emotional well-being and i know when i haven't listened to my own music for a few days i i feel it so i definitely try and prioritize that even if it's just a, a few minutes of listening to putting my you know my earphones on and listening to music while I go on a walk in the morning or if I um you know I'm making dinner so there's ways that we can include music in our day that don't have to take up a lot of time they can just be included in what we're already doing um and it's such a simple thing that we can do but sometimes we can forget because <laughs> we get caught up in our busy lives um so that's one thing that is really simple to do that everyone can do um then as i said singing your voice is so powerful so and we automatically when we're listening to to music we automatically often will sing along to it anyway so thinking of ways that you can um actively sing in your life um and taking the time to do that it can be you know humming even if you don't want to sing out loud you can hum and you're still going to get some really great benefits um and then as i said moving to music moving your body it's such a creative outlet for us it's really going to create um positive emotional well-being for us and something that as i again we automatically want to do to music but i guess sometimes we might um feel a bit shy to do to move to music but if you're in a safe environment in your own home um really just just bust out a move put some music on move your body um whatever feels comfortable for you so it can really just be yeah there's some ways that you can create a positive um environment in your home and have that more supportive emotional well-being for yourself as well okay so uh, my very last question for you is that uh, can you share some strategies or tips that can you know you be used by people at home by children by parents to create a, a positive emotional well-being using music as the primary element yeah so i guess something more specific um i guess i've gone through a few things already but um i guess for for parents i might just give an example for for parents of children uh things like you don't need to have a lot of things to to use but if instruments are really great for children because they're really motivating for them but you can make them yourself drumming is really really um great for young children for for many reasons it um integrates both the left and right brain uh, hemispheres of the brain it's rhythm based so that's really regulating for children um it helps with coordination so we're getting their motor skills going uh so lots of great things that you can use with drumming and you, as i said you don't need a drum you can use um tubs turn tub upside down bang on them engage with your child that way so you're going to get some of the benefits as well if you're doing it with them so that's one thing that parents can do with their children and they're going to get some really great benefits um in terms of individuals like i said just really take the time i always say just self care is so important for everyone and i always say it's uh, a necessity not a luxury and particularly as i work with a lot of parents <clears throat> i mean i always say you got to take time for yourself if your cup's not full then you're not going to be able to um support your child if if you're running on empty so really just being mindful and taking the time for yourself carving out small pockets during your day to to engage in self care and making sure music's included in that so um if you can 
definitely do that. Um, and in terms of, I'm just trying to think of another strategy that I haven't already sort of touched on already. Um, if you do actually one thing that is, that's really, really beneficial that I, well, if you play, if you play music, actually, if you're someone who has an instrument and you play music, definitely take time to engage in that as well. Not everyone does play music and you definitely don't need to be musical to, get the benefits from, from music and music activities. Um, but actually one other thing that I will, will mention is using music for relaxation. So a lot of people do meditate. Um, it, it doesn't have to be meditation, but you can just make a playlist. Um, a lot of people have access to Spotify and those types of um, streaming apps now. So make up a couple of playlists, one that's more for relaxation, and as I said, even if it's just five, ten minutes, just sitting down and listening or lying down, whatever's more comfortable for you, and listening to that calming playlist and taking some slow, deep breaths um, and making a playlist that's more for energising yourself. So if you're someone who might find it really difficult to get going in the morning, if you've got to go to work and you're feeling a bit tired, have a playlist that's going to boost your arousal levels and energise you for the day and just play that in the morning just before you're about to walk out the door just to get you going for the day. So that would be um, another strategy that I'd use that's going to support your emotional well-being. I am sure that uh, people would really benefit from these strategies. So uh, when it comes to music, we can really say that uh, the kind of music we are playing, the kind of music we are listening to and the emotional states together, they play out huge uh, have a huge impact in our overall well-being right yeah definitely absolutely uh, let's see if we have any questions i don't think that we have any questions right now if there are any we can always answer them later yeah if any pop up um i can definitely answer them for sure yes it was really wonderful having you on board. You shared such beautiful insights and it was it was really wonderful having you on board and we would love to have you on board in future as well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's been great chatting with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Enjoy your day. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Take care.